Chiefs reporter BJ Kissel here with ESPN's Mina Kimes. Touchdown, Kansas City! What matchup are you most looking forward to on Sunday in this game? I am most looking forward to watching Andy Reid and the Chiefs offense versus the Niners defense. That's the strength on strength matchup, you know, in in this game. And I think both defenses, or pardon me, both offenses actually have the advantage in this one is why I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Famous last words, I know. You say that and it always ends up you getting 13 to 3. Um, but I think Andy is one of the greatest minds in football history. I think people underestimate at times how good he is coming out of a box. I mean, he's constantly underestimated. I think when we talk about the great coaches, um, his influence on the league and schematically, I think, is unparalleled to say nothing of his coaching tree. So I'm very excited to see what kind of game plan he comes out with because I wouldn't be surprised if it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's been one of the storylines in talking with Coach and just kind of the narratives around the game is just how he's adapted the offenses around the quarterback that he's had. We saw it with Alex Smith. Now we're seeing it with Patrick Mahomes. And speaking of Patrick Mahomes, just want to get your thoughts. Everybody's got different adjectives. They try to figure out different ways to describe what they see from him when he's out on the field. But from your perspective, when you watch Patrick Mahomes, just how special is what you're witnessing? I will say something that I said during his first year as a starter. I said it about halfway through the year and you know, I was told that it was hyperbolic. I think now people are saying, I, I find there's more people who agree. I said, I think he'd be the greatest to ever do it. I, I And coming out of my mouth, it sounds extremely hyperbolic, but he has basically no weaknesses as a quarterback. And I think what struck me the most uh, in this postseason in particular is the combination of the legs and the arm. I mean, to have a guy like that who can not only throw all over the field, which is a nightmare for defenses in terms of covering, but can also, you know, take off and run. I saw probably one of the most exciting touchdowns uh, in the playoffs that I can remember recently. It just creates such a nightmare for defenses from a numbers perspective. I also think people underestimate how smart he is. And when we think about kind of what potentially, what sort of tricks San Francisco could play up front. Maybe they'll play sort of bring a sort of different coverage. They've been doing mostly zone all year. Maybe they'll throw in a little man. Patrick Mahomes is so good at dissecting defense. We don't really talk about that enough because his arm is so special, but his mind is just as special. I think it was big when Robert Sala said this week that he plays quarterback and that there was a bigger meaning behind that and that he does have those responsibilities at the line of scrimmage. And I think you bring up a great point. It's been discussed a little bit about him, about just how smart he is and how he is that, um, I, I, I can't think of the word, eidetic memory. Oh, yeah. Whatever that is called. Yeah. Um, he's got that, but I, don't have it. I obviously do not have that either. Everybody watching this already knows that. But, you know, what's the magic number for both teams? Before we get into more specific matchups on sure. both sides of the ball, what's the magic number that either team has to score for you to feel confident that that's the team that's going to win? Oh, boy. Uh, well, I think Mahomes has lost just eight times, and I want to say in six of those games, the opponent scored at least 29. Um, you can throw out the Colt. I, th I, I could be totally wrong. I, I'm willing to bet that that's Maybe not I wrong. I do have an idec deck <laughs> um, I forgot this word before I the end. like, you know, you got to throw out the Colts game because he wasn't right. Um, so I think San Francisco, I would say, has to score at least 30 points. Okay. Um, like I said, the, I also think the Chiefs have to score a lot because I, I do think um, – their defense has, is going to have a lot of issues against this San Francisco offense, which is extremely, extremely deceptive. And um, we saw what they did with the rushing attack, too. So I think it's going to be a high scoring game. Um, I'll say, you know, 30 for the Niners, okay. maybe more for the Chiefs. Maybe more? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to put you on the spot later okay. for a score prediction. Okay. But uh, my favorite Patrick Mahomes stat is that he does have eight losses, but none of them are by the more than one possession. He either wins by a lot or he loses by a little in the few times that he does lose. So on the, besides Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs offense, who do you think the biggest key player is besides the obvious Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill are off limits? On the Chiefs. Who, yeah, who else do you feel like needs to step up and have a big game uh, for the Chiefs to have success offensively against this Niners well, number one? Okay, I was going to be a hipster and be like, Daniel Sorensen or something, but all right. <laughs> He's gonna, a popular name right now. He's been good in the postseason, man. Um, okay, on offense, hmm. This is a fun thing because with the Chiefs offense, they have so many playmakers. Sammy Watkins can go out and come out of nowhere and have an incredible game. Um, I am actually leaning offensive line. Maybe like a Mitchell Schwartz or someone could be massive in this. Because here's the thing with Patrick Mahomes. If he has the ball for more than two and a half seconds, you're toast. 
And if that offensive line can protect him against a Niners pass rush that I think might mix it up a little bit more than they have, um, play some games up front, I'm not betting against him when he has time. Uh, we actually talked with Jeff Schwartz earlier, and he wasn't going to pick Mitch as the player to watch. So we actually talked uh, Bosa Fisher as the matchup that he was looking forward That's to. Good, yeah. So flipping on the other s- yeah. So flipping on the other side for the Niners offense, who's the one player that you're kind of thinking they have to have a big game if the Niners are going to have success offensively, and it's not Jimmy Garoppolo. Offensively again. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Emmanuel Sanders, actually, um, just because I think the Chiefs have the, uh, defense, pass rush, safeties are good. The cornerbacks have played well, I think, especially down the stretch. Um but I think that's an area that'll be op- a possibility for Jimmy if he wants to hit it. I imagine the Chiefs are going to really commit to stopping the run. I could see those wide receivers getting open on play action. Sanders actually having a lot of opportunities. All right, now on the defensive side for the Chiefs, there were so many changes in the offense. Everybody's talked about it for the way, the way that they played the last eight, nine weeks. But for Frank Clark, for Tyron Matthew, just from your perspective, how have you seen what they've done to change the, the kind of identity of the Chiefs defense, the way that people look at it? Tyron Matthews so fun to watch, man. It's been great, like just following his career from college through now, knowing everything he's been through. It's just been incredible watching him shine, both on and off the field. Clearly a locker room leader, so much charisma, and he's just played his mind out, uh, played out of his mind rather. Um, so I'd say, you know, that Chief secondary has been the big difference that pass defense under Spags is between last year and this year, because last year the pass rush was just as good, if not like a little bit better, yeah. quite frankly. Um, the Chiefs, I think, are not like, they're not gonna stop the run, let's be real. I mean, you've all- Derrick Henry numbers. would disagree, I'm just no saying. Offense. Well, you know, they kind of stopped giving the ball to him at a certain point there. And, and yeah, granted, they, they did, they were really impressive. I thought um, gap discipline, tackling, holding him to like 1.3 yards after contact good tackling but that is not the strength the strength of the team is the pass rush and the pass defense and if they can play good pass defense tighten up in the red zone i think that they've got a shot all right i gotta throw my favorite derrick henry staff from last week he was averaging 4.1 yards per rush after contact going into that game last week which is better than 12 nfl teams had before or after contact overall and the chiefs did a great job but Backing up storylines coming into this game, narratives, what's the one that you're most looking forward to talking about over the next few days and then seeing how it comes to fruition on Sunday? I'm really curious to see if Kyle Shanahan, look, 28-3 is following this Super Bowl, right? And everyone remembers exactly how that went down, his aggression, his history. I think he's... I know I sound hyperbolic here because I'm like, Patrick Mahomes is the greatest who's ever lived. Andy Reid is the greatest who's ever lived. But I think Kyle Shanahan is... Up there with Andy Reid in terms of brilliant offensive play callers, they're one A and one B to me. Um, so I'm very curious to see, you know, how those lessons of Super Bowl 51 resonate in his play calling, especially if the Niners have a lead. I'll be curious to see what they do on offense because you know that's going to be a storyline. All right, before we let you go, I told you I was going to put you on the spot. Score prediction for Super Bowl 54: Chiefs Niners. Who you got? What's the score? I gotta go with the prediction I've already put out and showed some consistency, but. Okay. Chiefs Nation, no, this is not my heart speaking. I'm a Seahawks fan, so you know what I want to happen. But I did say Niners 34, Chiefs 31. I didn't feel good about it. We will love to be wrong. We will see. We shall see. No, that's it. We shall see. Mina Kimes, thank you very much. We appreciate your time.